Because if my time in the army taught me one thing, it's that war, war never changes. Welcome to the latest edition of Nick's Nonfiction. You are here with your host, comic Nick Muniz. Back for another one, we have got Benjamin Witz and his book, The Future of Violence. While we have zero-point energy, thorium nuclear reactors, military science prioritizes harm. War has always been more profitable than forgiveness. Ask our boy Smedley Butler. A priest's favorite weapon isn't holy water for forgiveness, it's nunchucks. Whatcha? I like my beer like I like my violence. Domestic. One third of men beat their wives. That means two thirds of men aren't doing their jobs. Fuck domestic violence, we going international. Anthrax attacks kicked off the 21st century in the war on terror is what our author is running with today. He thinks everybody's got a dirty bomb. You gotta be on your toes when the real threat, democide, is the biggest cause of death in history. And now we have genetically engineered mosquitoes. So move over malaria. Now we could crisper another country into the grave. Mass war, we're talking about <laughs> the USA's cutting edge technology, us versus China. Who's gonna win World War Three? They're saying, China is looking to be the top military power by the end of this. I'll believe it when I see it. Patriotic take today, a gun owner. We're talking all about the future of gauze rifles down to the personal ownership level future violence. <laughs> Whenever I try to make jokes about the Civil War, and I still do, I get stonewalled. We're going to talk about the cowboy era, how they were developing repeating rifles we'll talk rebel gatling guns us confederates here the knickers <laughs> we'll talk snowden assange wikileaks as of course benjamin is getting into the future of supercomputing. why do we need 5g 4g is doing me pretty good download speeds i could upload hours worth of books every week no problem 5g is to spy on you you heard it here first who needs all this bandwidth <laughs> they're live streaming Every moment of your life, a lot of NSA talk in this book. The biggest servers, computers on Earth, out there in Salt Lake City. The Mormons are watching over it while it watches us watch porn. I'll take us to the brink of sci-fi. Gauze rifles, second skin armor, light-bending camouflage, ICBMs, undetectable aerial phenomena. That's right, it used to be wackadooville to talk about aliens. Now your government encourages it. And Flash Wars, do you even know what that is? Hot Wars, Cold Wars, that's so 1950s. We're into Flash Wars. Blackwater, Secret Armies. <laughs> Let me get one more in before the word from our sponsor, which you know it's coming because not enough of you are subscribed. And I'm about to stab you all with the Spetsnaz Wasp Knife. <laughs> size of a Bowie knife. And once you stab someone through the skull, in a hand-to-hand -hand combat, you're in close quarters, a bathroom drowning, a towel head in a toilet. You stab him with the wasp knife in the back of the skull, and you press the button, and it injects a ball of CO2 the size of a basketball. <laughs> you just painted this toilet worse than your girl's period. Sign me up, I want a wasp knife. The USA, we've got jetpack machine guns. Yeah, jetpack joyride <laughs> is a thing of the future. Take it away, sponsors. Because I remember the first bumper sticker I saw. I learned that uh, I got hairy legs that, 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 that turned blonde in the sun. And the kids used to come up and reach in the pool. 
and rub my leg down. So it's straight and then watch the hair come, come back up again. So I learned about kids jumping on my lap. I love kids jumping on my lap. Oh, uh oh, I'm in trouble, trouble. What are we nuts? Dead, dead, dead. You know, come on, man. Come on, man. Give me a little break here. Get a life. Taking cocaine or not? What do you think? Huh? Come on, man. Black, white, all colors, all backgrounds, what I mean. Come on, man. Men, women, gay, straight, everyone deserves a shot, you know. Come on, man. You know the thing. You know what I mean? You know the thing. You know what I mean? Come on, man. You have a problem figuring out what you're for me or Trump, and you ain't black. Come on, man. The corn pop was a bad dude, and he ran a bunch of bad boys. That can hardly wait to beat the next. Welcome back. Make sure you guys are subscribed. Uh, Instagram, Harry Schwant. Just search the niche on YouTube. And then top of the YouTube page, you got the Patreon link. We got really great hikes over there. Fun stuff. Short one. Benjamin Witz co-founded and is the editor-in-chief of Lawfare, which is devoted to sober and serious discussions of hard national security choices. Sober discussions? You came to the wrong place. <laughs> Between 1997 and 2006, Witz has served as an editorial writer for Washington Post, specializing in legal affairs. That's how he came up with that lawfare. It's a pretty cool name, kind of like warfare in the courtroom. Soiled his legacy, he started writing cuck articles for The Atlantic titled, Unmaking the Presidency, Donald Trump's War on the Most Powerful Office. Kamala Harris, you got a police chief in the White House now. We're going to talk about the shockwave taser that every single police department has. You got the most recent book from Benjamin Witz today, written in 2015. He also wrote 2012, 12 Independent Ideas for Improving American Public Policy. Detention and Denial, the case for candor after Guantanamo. Well, why didn't you call out your buddy Barack Obama? He ran on closing Guantanamo Bay. Shit's still open. We're pumping out the terrorists. Farm to table, FBI, non-GMO. Seven chapter book. Nicely broken down into three acts. And before you get any of that good stuff, it's another word from our sponsors coming through. Alright, alright, alright. The Future of Violence, Benjamin Witz, Chapter 1, Offensive Capabilities. Using gene-splicing equipment from Amazon, a molecular biology student synthesized smallpox, an extinct virus that only exists in containment. He spent upwards of three pages building up this scenario where a college student is not getting laid and he decides to recreate smallpox in his dorm room and then he ends the third page saying this scenario is not real but it could be throwing the fear at you from page one trying to say look how quick a pathogen could spread undetected which the war on terror started in 2001 and that's when the original congressman got the anthrax in the mail keep on sending it we're not <laughs> you don't have to storm the capital guys just fucking send them some mail in Agenda 30 type situations, you see <laughs> what they're running nowadays. They're saying a disease can spend up to three months dormant in a host's body without any sort of signs. It's good. We should all feel safe. That gain of function research is a thing. Our government is creating super bioweapons and it's for your protection. That was like one of the biggest flops I'd ever seen in the media in my life. The second one was when they said for the first two months of lockdown, it's killing everybody to go outside, and then they told you you're racist if you don't go march with BLM. And this flop was even bigger, Fauci going, you're kicked off of Facebook if you talk about the disease starting at Wuhan lab. Now they're straight up saying, yes, this is a weapons laboratory. This is what we do, son. We gotta test it and blame it on an innocent bat. Benjamin Witt's making these points with the first chapter. The number of people capable of synthesizing DNA, CRISPR, cyber attacks grows by the year. It's the same exact ethos as uh, cyber crime. Hackers, well, more people are getting good at computers, so more people are going to be inclined to do it. That's the authoritarian argument he is using, so we have to cut down anybody's use of a free internet. And in the case of DNA, just say nobody has access to the lab. Don't question anything. That's real science. 
he framed the Arab Spring as rogue dissidents using social networks to overthrow autocrats. <laughs> it's a bunch of kids on Twitter who are making memes about Bashar al-Assad. I mean, it's people unionizing on Twitter to use their First Amendment right, and that is a threat to the government. So he's saying, get rid of that. Not an easy read with all this framing. He's the type of guy that wants to see more censorship that gets more apparent through the chapters. Ben failed to mention that ISIS's number one recruiter is the FBI itself. And <laughs> I guess in a year you'll be allowed to talk about it because government's coming clean about aliens now. I live in Boulder. My fucking supermarket got shot up this year. I'm scared to go buy yogurt. What the fuck is going on, people? <laughs> The kid that they recruited to do this, he wasn't even from Boulder, from Longmont, I think it was, where there was a Walmart shooter, and he's a Syrian immigrant, and he had ties to the, he was being tracked by the FBI. Good thing they're doing all this data collection, and they were there to protect me from Prince Super Slaughterhouse. Some bullshit, man. It's close to home. You can't blame the rifle. It's the non-linear warfare that brainwashed the kid. Yeah, there's a war on your culture. We'll get to that in later chapters. Just let me spaz out real quick. Back in the day, you were living in a tribe. You made a bunch of spears in case the lions came by. You could use that spear to stab everybody. <laughs> I mean, what the fuck? We're going to do Second Amendment arguments? Direct quote, technology contains no inherent moral directive. It enables people to carry out good or evil. That Texas case, there was a shooter in a church, and some guy pulled his revolver off his hip and saved a bunch of lives. It's who's using the technology. And technology progresses. Maybe that's what humans are meant for here. Again, real big picture in Chapter 1. You're going to stop that to try to make everything safe. Up on the top of the YouTube page, <laughs> we got a merch link. Go buy your suitcase nukes. Technology isn't a prerequisite for violence. He talked about the 1994 Rwanda genocide, all carried out with knives, sticks and stones. Go read like the Better Angels of Our Nature, Steven Pinker. Violence is decreasing by year. These, you've heard this all before. Last half of the first chapter was about the Department of Homeland Security. They're warning about power plant attacks. This was like in the Smart Cities book we read. Somebody got control of the grid and shut down all the vending machines. How are we going to live? Even this year, the gas gouge that was happening was <laughs> blamed on a pipeline being hacked. How, who's hacking? You bought a computer up to the Keystone Pipeline? And there was that whole uh, power outage in Texas, too. Very independent state. It's suspected that they buy a lot of their energy from Brazil, who makes deals with China. Those are the rumors going around, and so you might see more of that. Definitely going to see more of these, like, blackouts. Gouging. Everything's being gouged. Steak is if I don't get gouged by the shooter at Supers. <laughs> ben over here saying weapons labs are classifying incubation periods. And they get shorter by all every year. So um, that gain-of-function research, it's pretty whack. You can mix AIDS with bubonic plague throw in a little bit of chicken pox <laughs> and people start getting orgasms when they scratch the lesions. I don't know. I did a lot more research for this book, guys, than just fear mongering by Benj. I'm watching those clickbaity YouTube videos, top 10 super future weapons. Let me tell you a little bit about skunk weapons. And no, not skunk works. One of those private armies. A skunk bomb is like a 12th grader's dream. It's a giant stink bomb that, unless you have a gas mask, you are going to evacuate the city. Grandpa fart level stench. I had an entire book planned on dirty bombs, and then I went back on the Amazon. The thing is now $200. You could read about the 60s, though. There's these biological gay bombs. It doesn't really make every dude make out on the spot. <laughs> we thought about dropping these on the Russians in the Cold War. It lowers testosterone over time. Like, you can't see it. It just lingers. That's pretty wild. And you hear in the West, testosterone lowest levels in 40 years. Back in World War I, they had mustard gas. Obviously, you know this. Maybe you didn't know they had pigeon bombs. They're already strapping bombs to pigeons. I was watching this video about swarm drones, which you know about if you play Call of Duty. Hundreds of mini drones. They just 
are attaching grenades to them and it is a net intelligence so you don't need a mainframe it can go on even if there is an emp is the idea and then it'll just kamikaze you it's called loitering munitions they just fucking circle around in the sky until they think you're a threat or blown up before dinner time he's got a robotics chapter later so we'll definitely get more into drones robots hate us i don't know why we're catering so much to them the ai sees us as an obstacle the biggest thing for robots is instead of needing a mechanism to deliver death you don't have to you know <laughs> fold a flag and bring it to a weeping mother anymore just send in agr to go out and do the job which is one of those <laughs> mini tanks on treads and it's got a fucking pk pachang machine gun hooked up to the top you don't need soldiers that much anymore we'll get into these errors later ants is a really cool darpa project i was looking into they have miniature drones and they could go autonomous without taking human just like surveil this and it could do it for a month at a time i seen an ant exhibit while i was tripping and that'll change your life they were building bridges out of their own bodies and they were climbing over so you got to think the individual ant doesn't have that much autonomy at that point and it's just serving the greater purpose and you could have drones do that make the corny comparison to humans robots man military what are they called mavs miniature aerial vehicles <laughs> so i watched this one 20 minute video it was about a military scientist he hooked up wings to a dead fly and so he was just flying around an insect corpse and you're not going to suspect much a camera unless you're a schizo guy <laughs> i tell you the government they could control flies they also hooked it up to a quarter in the video <laughs> i swear i saw change flying around you weren't there the silver dollars the sacagaweas they were in the trees man <laughs> mavs I'm telling you this is the future there's that big thing birds aren't real <laughs> neither are insects this is like doofenshmirtz evil incorporated <laughs> Bury the platypus, Ant-Man. What, this guy can shrink and grow? So can my cock. Some doofenshmirtz should hit up the tri-state area comedy club. <laughs> that guy was inventing the shrinking innators. You know, anything innator. That's what Darba's up to right now. Count on them for our offensive capabilities. He's going to do chapter one for us. Number two is called Vulnerabilities. Sun Tzu vulnerabilities rye in the unknown he's like when you see a spider in the shower you automatically assume it's venomous because not a lot of people have a, a tolerance to poison you got to protect all your vulnerabilities he started talking about law enforcement's reactions to drones if everybody had their own drone with a pistol on it we could <laughs> overthrow the federal reserve really quick I've looked into this myself. If you're watching the hiking videos, you're allowed to fly a sub 250 gram drone anywhere in the U.S. And the bylaws don't say anything about national parks. But of course, you know, the rangers are tripping and they could just tell you to ground the thing. In the book, he talked about like radio guns. I'll have pictures up on the YouTube. It's a giant square weapon. It looks like it's shooting out lightning bolts. And it hacks the controls of the drone from afar. And so the police now have control and steal all your footage and upload it on the police monetized YouTube page. <laughs> Cops, they're making their own content now. Grounding guns. 250 grams, you gotta stay below it. What's the biggest vulnerability of this year? You know, the capital was stormed and everybody has to care about this. Let's look at our capital. It's looked like East Berlin for the past year. You've seen the walls are still... When's that going to come down? They know we're about to fucking flip a shit on the federal government. That's when we're going to see the shockwave taser, <laughs> which is this little, like, uh, it's the size of a laptop. You put it down and it covers a football field with tasers. But you know they got on the MRAPs, there's police-sized tanks you got a microwave on top, and they'll just start heating your guts up from dinner from afar if they want the protest to end. <laughs> Founding fathers would love to see that. He says, in industrialized society, the mosaic of digital information is centralized. 
which is our biggest vulnerability. Having that mainframe is not a good idea because with one EMP, you can't control your army anymore. Chapter then chose to focus on big data being a country's gold mine. Why EMP the damn thing when you could invent TikTok and steal everyone's personal data? He was bringing up World Bank evaluations and countries that do not collect data are valued less. Let's pretend we're farmers. If I'm buying a bunch of steer from you and I don't know what you've been feeding them, I'm just going to give you a much lower price. If you have all the data on where the tax money is coming in, you could fudge your numbers a lot more. Wall Street's the only thing saving America right now. Data projection models. China, they could murk us with their... There is a case in the book about Majongos. It's a home security camera thing. And China was hacking into the entire U.S. <laughs> Ring camera that's keeping you safe. Because Xi Jinping, <laughs> he's in cahoots with the Chinese food delivery guy. There's a camera in your wonton soup. <laughs> Vulnerabilities were being described as lagging behind the opponent's capabilities. So if we don't spy on ourselves, then China is going to spy on ourselves. Like you could have just admitted you are stealing our data the whole time and then sold it to China. But now since none of the governments are telling the truth, our government is probably spying on Chinese people. Definitely they are through Facebook. It's um a false duality he's given us. Well, deterrence. We just have to nuclear race. More nukes. We're not going to be safe until fucking you could step on the ground and trigger a bomb. Every single year, the U.S. military loses nuclear weapons. Like, they just go missing. Does that make you feel safe? <laughs> Let's give them more control. Stealing your citizens' money through taxes, pretty alpha, spying... On your people's porn viewing habits. Pretty alpha. Look at the memes, bro. We have apparently Epsilon males are a thing. Or I don't even know if there's Sigma. How about Sugma males? Sugma balls, motherfucker. Alpha. What is all this? He's like... <laughs> that's not academic jargon. This guy is obviously a political figure. Which these are topical books. They're just not written well. He's saying China is spying on us, so the NSA, we have to give more money to hack into our ring cameras. We've known this shit for a while. Give him a little bit of credit. He said G7, this the nations that get together to blow each other, and how we all get pushed around by China. They're dumping enough CO2 into the oxygen as all of the seven other leading nations combined. You know, we're going to the negotiation table with China. Beta as fuck. Joe Biden is a Zeta male. Uh, well, I don't think that's very funny at all. I condemn Xi Jinping. We, we know what's going on over there. Corn Pop is a very bad dude. What was this chapter about vulnerabilities? The fucking Death Star. Luke Skywalker, he like flew into that one gully and he blew up an entire planet with we only got one shot. Pew! Hit the laser in there real quick peeled out before he <laughs> destroyed an entire planet of innocent civilians but he destroyed the super weapon the death star can even be killed with one vulnerability <laughs> you get the point chapter three defensive capabilities the iron dome let's take a look at israel all you have to do is be a little bit better defensively and then make one shot if we're talking about sports defense is all you need at the end of the day, and you could stalemate until the end of time. Think about, like, Battle Bots, <laughs> the original future of violence. That show was awesome, and then they started putting saw blades in the floor. The Scoop Bot could not be beaten. The Scoop Bot? This thing. <laughs> I got a fucking picture on my wall. It was the ultimate defensive capability. You couldn't hit it. It would flip over the bigger bots or just push them into the saw blade the usa warfare wise we could work with two theaters because we got oceans on either side defense floyd mayweather the best defensive boxer is the defensive capability is fighting youtubers that was the quickest i ever got laid at the pacquiao mayweather fight it's because the chick's defensive capabilities weren't up 
<laughs> Literally round one. It was a Sunday night as all boxing matches take place. You probably have money on the match, don't you? I'm actually going home. You should come. Game, set, match. One round knockout. <laughs> Dalai Lama. He said we don't need to have offensive capabilities. We only need to have the ability to counter attack. We just read some Lao Tzu, the Tao Te Ching. He's all about staying, biding your time, be the crouching praying mantis. That should be the future of violence, man. Supersized prey mantises. I would ride that into battle. This chapter was about Tibet. They got hit with a cyber attack in 2008. None of the Sherpas, I guess, could pull up all trails on their iPhone for a full month. What is so wrong with Tibet losing power? Go hike Mount Everest. Get outside, you damn kids. <laughs> the president of their country, he used the process of elimination. He's like, who else surrounding us got hit? Pakistan, Bangladesh, Indonesia, all these countries except India. So he was just like, all right, we know who did it now. Process of elimination deductive logic <laughs> I mean what they don't teach you in school intelligence communities are pretty good at it's DIY intelligence in his idea he talked about plantier technologies which is contracted by the US military they sold software to the CIA and they're credited with the whole 9-11 narrative you gotta look into like AdWorks who spins stories for MI6 the British CIA. I know I'm getting super technical on you guys today. This is a book about military warfare. If you can't hang, get out of the foxhole. Chapter shifted focus in the second half to private contractors. And this is the best way to cover your own ass. Being defensive means never taking responsibility. You know, when someone's being defensive, well, I didn't go to the gym because I had an extra cookie. So then shouldn't have you gone for twice as long? Defense means never fessing up, and we arm Kurds to attack Russians with M4s. What is a Russian guy? He comes across a dead Haji with a fucking American weapon. <laughs> Wonder how this happened. I'm saying here, having read Blackwater in a couple of these books over on the Patreon we'll have, the 2010s to the 2030s is going to be looked at as the era of contractors. It's the damn wild west over there the hills of afghanistan being a mercenary you get to fully kit yourself out with the most cutting edge rifles even they got the corner shot you have a bent barrel you don't need to expose yourself to shoot at people they have actual hud displays like a live Fortnite map <laughs> i'm saying in 10 years you're not going to need these kids that know how to 360 no scope you could just program a robot to do it so this era if you want to go kill people go do it now in the middle east <laughs> sign up with blackwater don't do it under the name of the american flag in one sense the distribution of defense capabilities is a blessing against coordinated offense he's talking more about this asymmetry and how if you know how the robot fleet works then you only need one piece of code that can counter it if you build robots to act like humans like idiots and not always do the predictable thing it's actually better for warfare so we kind of lose one thing when we go into full autonomy defense is good sporadically he talked about 1994 the Kalia act communication assistance for law enforcement and it said that t-mobile has to share their data with law enforcement. It's like the 50s. Hey, buddy Jack, don't call me with dirty work on the home phone. You know the government's got it bugged. 2020. Hey, government bug Alexa. What's on the top 10 Amazon book list of propaganda? The Kalia Act. We just passed the Trace Act. <laughs> I mean, it's fucking history repeating, and it's getting uh, more intrusive. He alluded to government patents on color laser printing. So if you buy a 3D printer, every single unit is encoded with its own serial number. So the government can track it. It's like what they were able to pull off with the Supreme Court through the 2010s with iPhones. So they could go through all of your shit if you start committing murders. The cloud is not safe. Benjamin kind of dropping bombs here. 1945, 
The Shamrock Program said the Army can copy all telegraphs. Been being bugged since the Pony Express, my fellow Americans. In the eyes of government, distributing defense means centralizing our data and then selling it, which I guess is a form of distribution. <laughs> like I said, let's just sell it before China can. To master defense, you got to minimize your vulnerabilities to the unknown. Part two of the book, chapter four, social order. Our boys going totalitarian. Chapters predicated on the fact that our enemy is the individual rather than the other collectives. This whole book is about terrorists, not other governments who have Triton missiles in space. <laughs> we have the EWS, the early warning system, which covers like half the globe. Is that really going to protect us, the ultimate social order from the doomsday? Let me tangent at the top of the chapter. I just watched um, Dr. Strangelove. That old movie about dropping the bomb, how you will learn to love nuclear. And it's about chaos. Like, all the generals, of course, want their war. But the presidents <laughs> never want to be remembered in history forever as the guy who set off the doomsday device. Dimitri, Dimitri, listen, listen to me. I'm telling you, nobody meant to launch the nuke, but you're going to have to shoot down one of our planes for both of our goods. You launched a nuke at us? And Dimitri, I'm sorry. Runs a mile with this false premise. He's like, <laughs> James Bond villains were able to destroy the entire world. Okay, what is this fucking fifth grader argument? Talk about geopolitics. I thought you worked at the White House, buddy. This actual book is about James Bond. <laughs> Blamed the 1919 rise of the Weimar Republic on charismatic individuals. I'm a fucking idiot 25-year-old. What a, is the Treaty of Versailles something we're going to forget about? We told Germany you're never going to be a country again if you even think about making one goer. We are going to take away the Volkswagen industry. Start making tanks inside of the car factories. But no, it's charismatic individuals that created the Nazis not telling the country you can't keep any of your money. If not Hitler... Would have been some other methed up national socialist. <laughs> I've said on the show before, bureaucracies are just tools for psychopaths. Which would make a government the best super weapon one can imagine. This chapter is called Social Control. Mind Control. Karl Marx's socialist literature. This is about controlling behavior. Controlling economic movement. There's no such thing as world domination if you don't have a government to dominate the world. Let's go back to the spear example. We're all around the fire one night, guys. I think I'm going to take over the peninsula. Peninsula domination. Everyone's going to bow down to me. Yeah, how are you going to pull that off? Well, first, I'm going to create a system of electorates and representatives so everyone thinks that they're telling me what they actually want. At. It's not going to be with the spears. It's going to be with this cathedral of rhetoric and dogma. It's pretty amazing. Again, I don't, really don't want to spend the entire chapter on this fucking totalitarian logic of make sure you suppress your neighbor to maintain social control. <laughs> Let's talk about some Nazi super weapons. The V-1 was the first ever cruise missile. Nazi engineers, don't leave them alone in a room. With a friggin' Mentos and a Coke can. V-2 was the first ever ballistic missile, so it, like, fired itself. And then the V-3 was the first ever ICBM, intercontinental ballistic John. And the Black Ops were rumored to have, like, seized the program until the end of World War II. You know, Einstein was German. They were neck and neck with the Manhattan Project. Good thing the Russians got the Berlin. <laughs> Nazi super weapons. They fucking built a gun into a hill. It was called the Propellant Charge Owitz, the Duminator. And it would accelerate matter to supersonic speeds. And they would shoot it at juxtaposing mountains. What? You see, even on, like, U.S. Navy ships, we have rail guns. <laughs> the U.S. videos are pretty laughable. They're like, new technology. You see, we finally have rail guns on the USS Maddox. And then you look at German 
like I had to watch some English reporting videos. I'm saying the German ones are really good, where they're just talking about gauze rifles. You can shoot electricity at people now. Let's stop with the fucking nine millimeters NATO ammo. Another artificial shortage. <laughs> I want a fucking electricity handgun. Kill me, Captain Kirk. I'm going to be vaporizing dudes <laughs> in the streets, challenging people to duels after a couple drinks. Call me a Nazi. I'll drop a Fritz X-bomb on you. You ever hear of this little ditty? It would drop 3,500 pounds of explosives, and it was fitted with a radio and its own guidance department. And this is before, like, circuit boards. They invented smart bombs before we have even smart ammunition now. So if you're <laughs> Chris Kyle, you could, like you said, be on top of the Megadome during Hurricane Katrina, load up some smart ammunition, shoot straight up into the air, and then the bullet will never miss your target. Fritz X-Bomb invented that. The Nazis had Zielgrat Vampire Display, and this was the first ever night vision. It was developed by AEG. Why aren't they being canceled? Nazis invented remote-controlled track mines, like mini tanks that would explode on their own. Germans developed the Messerschmitt, you know. These are the first ever jets. It would go 700 miles per hour, and our Mustangs in World War II were topping out at 440. <laughs> Good thing Operation Paperclip came around. We needed to steal these Nazi scientists before they tunneled under Antarctica into New Swaziland. Look into it! Knowing your government has the cutting edge gets people amped up. You could convince them to create a Reich. I'm saying, the U.S., we got to put out more of this information. Stop hiding it. Show people that we have the super hovercraft. You got to look this thing up, man. It's like Jimmy Neutron's old hover. Remember that goddamn thing? <laughs> it could um, go over the Atlantic Ocean in a day. It's super high speed because it's not even on the water. And in the center, you could fit four tanks. And imagine a fleet of these. You got 12 bulletproof hovercrafts cruising across the Atlantic Ocean going to fuck up some Nazis. <laughs> Get us galvanized, America. I think the war propaganda is yet to come. <laughs> like the CIA is doing this name of the chapter social order warfare right now they're trying to recruit people through wokeness yes a five minute video about i will have mental disorders and that makes me handle classified intelligence information did you see this it's kind of old at this point fucking cia chick the real test there <laughs> they made that video to waterboard people and torture them with i mean interrogate them in guantanamo bay you just got to watch that recruitment video on a loop. <laughs> Social order. Over a third of Americans are reliant on opium nowadays. You look at 30s Germany, and there are similar numbers to people who were on Ritalin. And that's just getting big in America, too. Get fucking obsessed and binge a TV show instead of creating a Fritz X bomb. He floats in here. <laughs> it's egregious. End of the chapter. He just, you know, nudges it in. The domestic social contract has to be rewritten to protect the whole. Okay, G. The group is greater than the individual. It's trying to use Hobbes against the seekers of liberty. The state of nature is not war. It's movement. You know, the only thing that's constant is change. The way that people misinterpret this nature is war. It's everybody, yes, is inherently self-interested, but everybody does not have the propensity for unprovoked violence. That is like the 2% of sociopaths can just fucking snap on people. What we're getting at here with this, should we prioritize individuals or let the Yelp review decide whether your restaurant should stay over? The ultimate weapon, once you have the government, is the social credit system. And they already have this in China. What's happening to us and to America is what happened under Mao in China in the 50s. It's a slow game. But they get your kids first. And that's how they killed God over in China. You know, God might be dead, like Nietzsche said, but spirituality isn't. These kids are scientismists now. And they believe that 
canceling people is the Sunday ritual. This social credit system is a way to weaponize culture against one another. It's your digital identity. Does that sound like anything in America without polarizing our own audience? It's coming here. It um, eliminates privacy. He said gives direct control over voting, purchasing, living, transportation. You're just a unit. If Adolf could have instituted a point system, Hitler Youth would have um, been breeding better national socialists than Antifa. He ended saying the prospects of a world government are being made possible by grand architects designing a social credit system based around safety. Does that not creep anybody out? The prospects of a world government already have in mind what we're... It was like when Senior Bush got on and was like, yes, it is true. And for safety reasons, we are moving America towards a global government, one world order. Some of these books are just like, <laughs> just puts the uh, playbook out there. And that is an ultimate vulnerability in war. Social order, got to maintain it. Chapter 5, Rethinking Liberty. Combined a second chapter here called Rethinking Jurisdiction. How much do you think I can entertain this chapter without me getting triggered? Rethinking Liberty? Let's not, Benjamin! I know you mean redefining liberty. It's okay. Make up your own new word. New normal. You mean abnormal. Ab-liberty, it should be called. He showed before you gotta give him credit that the Geneva Convention is outdated. Every country tortures one another. The next thing to go is the UN Universal Declaration of Human Rights. <laughs> next thing to go? It's not like China is fucking violating that in u gear. There are concentration camps on Earth this year happening, coming to you right now, live concentration camp. <laughs> go rethink liberty in China, dude. What are you doing this in America for? Many people are just as oblivious to the Franklin quote. He dropped it in, creative writer. Those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary freedom deserve neither freedom or safety. Ben twists it, saying, Franklin wasn't talking about civil liberties. He was talking about the liberty to create your own laws and govern. So we're all free to create our own edicts to impose on one another. That's the only thing you're free to do. You're not free to live your own life not interfering, but you're only free to aggress on other people. What? What? My brain is going to break. <laughs> he says it's the public's best interest to let the government create a DNA catalog so they can synthesize custom medicines. Or just go to your doctor. Benjamin, so I know you're a writer, and you probably can't afford Blue Cross Blue Shield. <laughs> what the fuck is this, man? We have to let the government create a catalog of our DNA. What if, and this is an out there theory, we got everybody to exercise, <laughs> or a crazier one. We didn't put artificial sweeteners and processed carbs in every single piece of food. What if? <laughs> no, the solution is letting the government catalog our dio <laughs> love this. It gets a rise out of me. See how the technocrats, they try to redefine liberty, saying the only way people can be safe is if you give up doctor-patient confidentiality. <laughs> what? The government has convinced you that arming violent rebels is more safe than being allowed to own your own M4. The entire war on terror. Let's give those guys guns to fight the guys with guns so that we feel safe with a 15-minute police response time at home. Don't know about that, Chief. Got to change the perspective if you want to be able to get around the ring with these Mayweathers. I've been thinking about 1776, as I always do before I go to bed at night. <laughs> Maybe that wasn't our real rebellion. Like, uh, 1776, we just adopted a federal government. That doesn't really sound like a revolution to me. 1787, if you start reading about the Federalist paper revolutions... Me and the Anti-Federalists. Where are my Confederates at over here? <laughs> Our origin story is to convince us that we need this Articles of Confederation to control the states. And I know it's a pretty deep theory that can't be proved or disproved. 
but technically that's the definition of science. <laughs> you got to spin a narrative to curtail people's liberties without them getting violent. They like, convince the slaves they're free. You got to be asleep to believe in the American dream. Redefine liberty every few years. <laughs> Send a new dictionary out. What was that? The friggin' Stamp Act in 1940? <laughs> They're reading your letters. Think about the lack of privacy your 3D printers will have. This is the trend we're on, and our constitutional rights keep getting redefined. Part 3, Chapter 6, our second to last one Future Surveillance. Start this one talking about the ancient Romans and how they were able to build a network of 50,000 miles of roads and they weren't able to build it off the profits of people paying their government taxes for the roads they fronted the money so that they can then police the roads and then make money off of jailing people so all the way out to Alexandria Carthage Cadiz up to the border of London and Scotland was Roman taxed once you control the internet, like once we start using more Zoom, Chinese-based apps, they can more obviously police our roads, but then they're getting the advertising fees. John Cena, you're going to see him speaking a lot more Mandarin while he eats ice cream. You see, the idea was to get all of Europe dependent on the Roman road system. And a better example, in the U.S., we banned Huawei which makes better phones than Apple, uh, you're not allowed to buy it here <laughs> because then you'll see that Chinese technology is pretty damn sweet. When Rome began to project its force outwards and started taxing the city-states, then bandits started to arise. He's getting into an argument we've had on the show before. The cost of empire is terror. Modernize it. If you jailbreak your iPhone, they delete your iCloud right <laughs> remember you would download the advanced warfare app for $15 for free and then <laughs> you would like get a virus on your computer your dad's entire music library is gone you're gonna get more of these hackers more people trying to jailbreak their phones I don't know man empire creates outlaws and the most cinematic dude the best outlaws maybe ever I'll go for it are the U.S. Cowboys. When we standardized oil, the railway system became the biggest loot for anybody who had a mask and a silver horse. This book, equally about the history of violence. They didn't have just six shooters in the Wild West. They had belt-fed handguns. So you link up with a couple other outlaws, get your horses into a chariot, and get a belt-fed handgun in case any friggin' brave sheriff wants to try to act up. You friggin' rob this train. I gotta start, what was that, The Lone Ranger? I'm definitely watching that again because we got some western theme books coming. Slut guns. Perfected in the Wild West. These little 22s. And then the CIA, 50 years later, started shoving them into cameras, into shoes. Suitcase gun. Slut guns. I love going to Cabela's looking at the little tiny... <laughs> I want to tell you about my weapons, but you should never specify your own protection because then you'd be letting other people know your greatest vulnerability, as Eddie would say. What is this guy's name? I love a good outlaw tale. Think about like a Japan. The ninjas were the outlaws to the samurais, and they invented the ninja star. I played with those relentlessly as a child. You got to give it up to the Brits, the pirates. That's got to be up there with one of the best outlaws of all time. They had the blunderbuss. <laughs> so the homegrown American hillbilly has his sawed-off Mossberg shotgun. Blunderbuss? Are you kidding me? You could destroy the mast of a ship. I would definitely, we're talking zombie apocalypse future violence, sawed-off double barrel. No questions asked. Cowboys had like six barrel pistols. So much you could go look into. Mentioned the modern Wild West again, the Couscous Caucasus Mountains in the Middle East. And these outlaws are fighting mercenaries. Like, I was talking about Flash Wars in the intro. 
Armenia is just going to war with Israel in some of these mountains. So it's not really a U.S. war. The U.S. is they're just using this as propaganda to get more funding to try new planes over at Northrop. All the countries of the world are doing like exhibition match skirmishes over in the Middle East. I'm telling you, the Armenians, <laughs> it's fucking weird, man. You got to look up the propaganda videos they put out. It looks like Mad Max. They have a ton of guys with rifles standing there. One of the guys in full uniform is singing the punk rock song while there's a guy jamming on guitar in front of a launch truck. I don't know the name for it, but it literally is Mad Max when they have the guy. He's up in the air on the fucking wires, shredding his guitar, shooting fire out of the neck of it. There's an Armenian guy, and they shoot drones out of a truck while he's playing hard rock. I was about to fucking sign up to be an Armenian Marine when I saw this. The Israeli. <laughs> they recruit. They don't even have to recruit. You get automatically drafted. But they do have propaganda videos of uh, Israeli chick soldiers twerking. This is next level M mental warfare. They're fucking getting young boys boners to go to war. I talked about loitering munitions before. This shit that's going over in the Couscous Mountains. <laughs> You're going to get kamikazed. Blackwater has been pioneering armor polymers. I watched a couple videos on this. And this is like you watch a Marvel movie and there's always that scene where they go up to Tony Stark's lab and then they, they show him a bunch of new suits. And so there's this one you probably heard of, the Hulk. And it's a literal exoskeleton that we have. And you can run a marathon while holding 100 pounds. They showed a video of it. A guy did it in China. He ran the marathon in three hours. So you're running at friggin' Kenyan pace with 100 pounds on you. These are the future is now, people. They have this one polymer, and it's skin tight. And when it gets hit, it I just punched myself in the chest. You heard it. When it gets hit, I need this armor. It tightens up. So it, they showed it. It broke a hammer. Imagine you're wearing that. A guy comes at you with a war hammer, and you just let him take a shot at your chest. Obviously, you get the freaking kinetic energy. You watch those videos of <laughs> idiots shooting each other with bulletproof vests. You definitely got to have a black and blue. It's going to save your life, though. And the thing about this polymer that tightens on impact, when you move your joints, it tightens the chains inside the fabric. So you also have strength. Like you're not getting tired carrying around your rifle. You can pack out that much more munitions in your backpack. Because you got a fucking morph suit on. This shit is futuristic when you get to the deeper levels. And you know. You know. We have camouflage cloaks. The point of this chapter was future surveillance. In order to be able to beat something, obviously you have to be able to see it. And so there are all these like invisible tanks they have. I was searching. Switzerland sells them to a lot of countries. It's not like a normal bulky tank. It looks like it's hovering. Spent a lot of time on the iGEM this chapter, which is a registry for biological components. So like your DNA will be surveilled. It was like in the Smart City book how he was saying the toilets are going to snitch on you if you piss hot. More like short toilet. Why are we paying for our DNA to be housed so they could sell it to other people? Who cares? From the road of Rome to the future, your manager or dictator, if they want to control your behavior, they have to surveil it. So the Fourth Amendment had to go eventually. It was a Enlightenment resolution when all the kings weren't let you stay at an inn because God was watching you. <laughs> Big Brother is watching. I'm not really trying hard to make these points connect right now. I'm sorry. Taught us in criminal justice how policing is like all about surveillance and it's really all about profiling people. <laughs> The more you pull over black people, the more money you save. They did this study in the Newark Bridge. If you live in the Northeast, you've crossed over it on I-95 when you're going into Delaware. Giant bridge, always traffic. They pulled over like 100 white people, 100 black people. And on the day they pulled over the black people, they got a bunch more hits for drugs. But of course, you still have to meet your quotas and pull over just as many white and black people because <laughs> it's smart policing to haggle white people 
And now I start sounding racist because I'm not being as articulate. <laughs> we don't even have to be bribed to be surveilled and silenced. We're a bunch of cheap whores. <laughs> the future of surveillance can only be curtailed by an uprising of outlaws. That's right. We need more cowboys out here on the frontier with your boy. Can't put a GPS on my horse. Let's go to chapter 7. Domestic governance. Our final chapter. Must suck to be like a pacifist parent. As they say, you don't hit your kid. You're teaching them that murder is meat or you're not allowed to kill people. <laughs> and then at 18, in your kid's cafeteria, the most inspiring warrior looking man comes up to your son and says have you ever wanted to fire a rifle at an evil person and then your son turns into a fucking spartan superhero and starts killing people I'm not saying either side is bad i'm just saying domestic governance is supposed to take place in the household this is totally lost on this century of parenting like your kids get brainwashed by their phone at 12 years old they have <laughs> their own political ideologies by six they want to be trans yeah you could teach kids to be violent from a pretty young age but like i'm saying it's trending the other way so this entire chapter is kind of moot domestic governance talk about <laughs> ending the fed but that would get rid of his sweet honeypot washington money a lot of cultures governance doesn't enter the house your morals come from the home Instead of the television, nonlinear warfare. So the whole book is kind of touching on growth of power of the state is to create more convenient idiots by generation. And he called them patrons of the state. We like to call them bootlickers here. I'd much rather hang out with a religious guy than some gung-ho MSNBC activist. <laughs> well, actually, you've microaggressed on the entire... How about I shoot you? Half the people at the range are wearing a cross. You don't see me complaining. He sucked off George Bush for most of the chapter because after 9-11, he called FEMA. <laughs> Honey, there's a burglar. I just got raped. Okay, I'm not going to shoot him. I'm just going to call the cops. Great example. If you're not with us, you're against us. <laughs> um, after 9-11, we redacted a 400-person poll of eyewitness individuals. A good thing George Bush told FEMA to get their act together over in Manhattan, getting the real story. And I'm thinking FEMA, weeks before, they ran anthrax drills in the World Trade Center. I took a whole class on, like, disaster relief. This is his whole justification for the book. We got to spy on everybody so that we could prevent the Boston bombing. You got to wonder, maybe the Zarnovsky brothers knew the boulder shooter because both of them were being surveilled by the fbi both of them successfully i just put that meme up in the video a couple weeks ago <laughs> the intelligence communities when the sad loner agrees to do the shooting yo he's gonna do it real shit that's gonna be a hype day in the office we got one we got one boss <laughs> George Bush, so brave to call FEMA after Hurricane Katrina. Remember that photo shoot? He was like hanging out of a helicopter and there were people on a roof <laughs> with an X on it. Please let us in the helicopter. He's just waving at him. Cajun Army and Katrina, they did more for people than FEMA did. I brought up Chris Kyle before. Our biggest hero was sniping looters instead of <laughs> bringing homeless people to safety. Violence is not going anywhere. Washington, D.C., who we trust to maintain the state of violence on the globe, has one of the highest rates of shooting in the inner city. I'm going to have to say I don't think the answer is there. Aside from governments being the biggest weapons, we got to end it on the most super god weapons of all, Mother Nature. In the USA, Washington is a problem. The Cascade Mountain Range is home to dozens of active volcanoes. All it's going to take is one of those earthquakes to trigger this thing. You're sitting on a fault line over there. During a volcanic explosion, the top thousand feet of the mountain fall from the sky. 
1980 was the last time it blew up and it let out a bunch of noxious gas. St. Helens is like a medium-sized explosion that went down. It was equal to 1,500 Hiroshima's. The shockwave goes 400 miles per hour. This is a bomb that goes off. 1,300 feet of mountain just fucking raining on people's head along with smoldering ash. This is worse than any bomb we could ever create. Phase 2 of the explosion, the atmosphere gets abolished. So you get cooked with UV radiation and you got to move out of there. Oh, but we have nukes. We are playing God, right? How come seven years after Hiroshima and Nagasaki, people live there? What about all this? I watch YouTube videos of Russian kids infiltrating Chernobyl. (laughs) You should probably look into. You're never going to beat nature. Like, there are cases people have theorized that you could make active another country's dormant volcano. And then once they're in phase two, that shit, the crappy atmosphere, deteriorates entire continents. You know, a nuclear winter. You got to sign me up. Put me on the war board, chief. I got all the ideas here. Domestic governance should be about being able to recover from these events or prevent it. What's like a concoction we could put into the volcano to make it stop? Nothing. Build a giant dome. Let's blow each other up instead. Super tornadoes. There was a tornado in Boulder recently. I'm thinking of storm chasing. It's going to be my new hobby. Dude, if you could create a F5 tornado on your enemies, <laughs> game over. Any sort of tank they have is going to be 50 feet in the air. Category 6 hurricanes. I bet you didn't even think it was possible. Well, in 1993, Harp proved that aerosol injections can seed clouds to create lower tier hurricanes. That was 1993. And yes, aerosol injections. Have you ever heard of this? Maybe you should listen to the guy on the corner who's selling oranges. <laughs> Chemtrails are real. They lied to you about that one too. They're like, oh, no, no, no. Those things you see in the sky, it's not aluminum and dangerous chemicals that we're using to try to make storms. It surely is. Harp. Go look into that shit. High altitude spy planes are able to plan ambush and lightning attacks. So you're above the clouds that you created while it's fucking zapping your enemy's tanks. I forgot after you nuke somebody's volcano too, there's a phase three. Billions of gallons of water gushes out of the floor. So then eventually everything floods like Pompeii and that solidifies all of the ash. If the lava wasn't enough, you're getting hit with the fire and the ice. (laughs) All of your enemies are left looking at a permanent museum. A nuke just ionizes your opponent. If you could hit him with a volcano, no one will ever forget your true might. (laughs) He ended saying security is always changing, so be ready by identifying your biggest vulnerabilities. And I'll say let's move towards some actual self-governance. Thank you, Benjamin Witz, for an enjoyable one. The future of violence here on Nick's Nonfiction, another fun edition. As for next week, likely going to be a Patreon edition, so you guys will get a teaser over here on the YouTube page. Make sure you guys are all subscribed over there. Give a follow over on Instagram, Harry Schwant. It's fun memes, and I'm happy to be here for another week. I'll see you guys in six short days. My name is Nick Muniz. Catch y'all later.